Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Here, let us begin the day with charity. Charity. Give to others, and Hashem will give to you. Don't be stingy. Hashem should protect all of our soldiers, should defeat all of our enemies, should make the world a good place. <clears throat> charity. Charity saves from all the negative things, and it brings the future redemption. Tzion b'mishpat to put it. Let's also give thanks to Hashem that we're alive. We're grateful to you, God, that you gave us back our soul this morning and that we can serve you. Big miracles. Okay, yesterday we're learning in the book, which is called Torah Or. Torah Or. And we're learning what, why is this section about Noah and the flood in the Torah? What's What is it coming to teach us? So, Again, just to remind everyone, the Torah is a book of teaching. Torah means, the word Torah means teaching. So everything in the Torah comes to teach us something about our life. Something about life. <clears throat> so what does this come to teach? First of all, the Torah is also, it's, it's, it's a book for the Jews. <clears> the <throat> Torah is a book for the Jews, and the Jews are for the world. <clears throat> the Jews are supposed to be the teachers and the instructors and the priests, whatever, of the whole of the world. The representatives of the Creator in the world are the Jews. And the Torah is their instruction book. <clears throat> and there's a lot of, uh, in the Torah, which is also relevant to the non-Jews, but this has to come through the Jews. And the Jews got it through Moses. And Moses got it directly from God. Okay, so the Torah is coming to tell us in this, <clears throat> uh, no, this, uh, <clears throat> This week's Torah reading of, about Noah, Noah, that Noah survived the waters. And there was, because the whole world sinned, so God made this terrible uh, punishment, this terrible flood. So the Rebbe asked the question, one second, if you want to punish people, you know, one of the, one of the ways of, of there's four uh, death punishments in Judaism, four different types of punishment by death. Uh, for them, uh, one of them is strangling. One of them, the court, the court finds somebody. So there's some crimes which are punishable by strangulation, something like hanging, but it's not really hanging. <clears throat> and some are by beheading, and some are stoning, uh, and some are what's called burning. They, 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 they pour hot lead down a person's throat. Anyway, these are very bizarre <clears throat> uh, death penalties. Death penalties in in America they also have different ways. Some they have they have by the gas chamber. Some people have by the injection. Some people have by this electric chair and by firing squad. And but in the Torah it's not that way. There's no firing squad. <clears throat> Maybe something like that. There is there's stoning. There's, okay, but there is no war at, at least that I know of, that there's a punishment by drowning. They drown a person, and here God sentenced the whole entire world to drown, to death. Kill the whole world by drowning. Okay, so why in the world do you pick such a weird <clears throat> way of killing them, which, in fact, it's not one of the accepted ways of, of capital punishment. And <clears throat> also, it, it's very inefficient. Why, why just drown the whole world? Why do that? <clears throat> just <clears throat> make everybody go to sleep and not wake up in the morning or something. That's very easy. God could have done no problem, you know. So the Rebbe says the answer is, is that the, the waters came to purify the world. And just like a mikvah, we talked about it yesterday, a mikvah, a person that's impure, according to the Torah, he touched a dead body or whatever. So part of the process of becoming pure is they have to go to a mikvah. You have to go to a mikvah, you have to immerse yourself <clears throat> in waters. And the minimal amount of these waters is 40 units. There's 40 units called 40 saw. Same thing is the waters of the flood they rained, the rain ran down for 40 days. 40 days. So the number 40 is a sort of a, um, uh, how do you say, a, a, a purifying number. Moses was also on Mount Sinai for 40 days and 40 nights, but in case 40, number 40. <clears throat> so what, good, okay, so 40, what's it got to do with us? And why water? So the Rebbe said that there's a sentence which in, 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 in the prophets it says, my, in in uh, King Solomon, in Song of Songs, and it says, "Mayim Rabim 
Lo yuchlu lichvosh. And in, in uh, Isaiah, there's a sentence that says that God will not again bring the floods of Noah on the world. Floods of Noah. So why are they called the floods of Noah? Why are they called the floods of Main Noah? So this is because Noah is a good name. Wait, 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 what am I doing? This is, I want to do this. Here we go. Here we go. Because Noah is a good word. Noah means rest. Noah means comfort. Menachem, nach, means to comfort. And they're called comforting waters. Why? Because these waters <clears throat> gave God comfort. Why? Because they purified the world. They purified the world. <clears throat> the people in the world were so into their desires, and desires are connected to water. It says that the element of water is <clears throat> the people in the world were so <clears throat> enwrapped, they were drowning in their own desires, so God decided that they're just incorrigible. There's no way you can evict them. So he, he purified the world. He got rid of all these bad urges, and the people were so connected to their urges that he got rid of them also. And because the people, the world depends on human beings, so the, the people affected the animals. And the animals, all the animals in the world were also killed. God had to start restart the whole entire business. Business. A restart. And this is done by water. By going into the water, there's also the a, a baby when he's in the the uh, <coughs> his mother's womb, so there's water. There is within is within the the water which is in the womb. It says that's what going into the mikvah is supposed to be like being reborn. And that's what happened with the <clears throat> Mabul, it was a reset of the whole entire world, whole entire creation. Things were just so naturally bad and decadent and, and crooked and destructive that God said, I just, I can't, there's no way they can be fixed. Nobody even has an urge to correct themselves. All they're thinking about is just how to do more bad. So therefore, God purified. Well, the same thing is now by means of <clears throat> making a livelihood. In a Shibura Parnasa, making money nowadays, having money is also called a main noach. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> making money is not so easy because it's it's <clears throat> it's much easier to live dishonestly than to live honestly. And right, the people that are dishonest usually they climb up to the top. They know how to be dishonest. They know how to give. Uh, <clears throat> bribes and to threaten people and stuff like that. Classics, you know, so there's mafia stories and this. But government stories in general, they become tremendously rich by extortion and by lying and by cheating and by faking the people. Oh, look how, how rich the church is, right? Just the, the big, huge things by making people feel guilty and feel people <laughs> feel the, the afraid, <clears throat> etc. And they give the money for this. Okay, so to make money is not an easy thing to do, to make honest money. To make honest money. Says the Rebbe, that that is the problem. That's the, that's the turbulent waters. That's the turbulent waters. You make your mind up that you're going to make honest money. You're going to be honest to make your money. And that all of your dealings in the world are going to be honest and according to your conscience as you have to make some really, really difficult decisions and you get yourself into really difficult situations, challenges, challenges. And that's the challenges of the world. Now, God, for some reason, he made the world that people have to eat. People have to eat. <clears throat> there are some people I remember once, it was once before I became re religious, I got interested in, in uh, these different, I guess they're Hindu practices, whatever. These people go and they sit in the mountains, in India, and in Tibet, and things like that. And they can sit for years, and, you know, they don't eat, and they don't sleep, and they don't this. And I remember I got really interested in this stuff. I was really interested in it. And I was reading books, <clears throat> and I started, got, one book is really interesting, you know, how to do this, you know, tantric yoga, and raja yoga, and different meditations you do, and bringing up the kundalini, and all this stuff. <clears throat> I mean, I didn't do it, but it was just interesting to read. And so I was getting into it. I thought, maybe I'll take some courses. And then finally, I got to the end page. And there was a picture of some, I guess you could call it a human being. It was like, 
you know, a dark skinned sort of a fellow sitting on, on a rock. Snow was all around him and he had these furs on him. And this, this is our master. And he had a name which was like about 70, le 70 letters in it. He's been sitting in the mountains of Tibet. He's not eaten anything for 40 years. And I remember thinking to myself, one second, this is my goal. This is what I'm going for, that I don't eat anything for 40 years. In other words, I said, not, not for me. That's <laughs> This is definitely good. You save money, but what are you going to do with the money? You're sitting on a rock all the time. <clears throat> so I figured, no, that's not, you know, even if he's experiences the greatest pleasures in the world, it does not seem to me that that's anything but selfish. So that's the idea of <clears throat> the turbulent waters of making a living in this world. <clears throat> but the main thing is being in the world, the physical world, but being in the world in an, in an honest way. And you have to meet challenges. And those are the those challenges which are presented to us, that's what's called the turbulent waters of Noah. And that purifies us. Shekomoshi Yersha, just like it's impossible for a soul to go to heaven and get pleasure from the rays of the God's Shekhinah, of God's presence. And she'll tear it with Kodim. But first of all, it has to go, first of all, into hell. Okomosha Omer, like it says, Gabi Acher, like it says by Acher. Who was Acher? Acher was a, a, a great genius, um, one of the Tanaim in the time of Rabbi Akiva. He was the, te he was the teacher of Rabbi Akiva. It was in the time of Rabbi Akiva. So it was the same. <clears throat> no, no, no. I'm sorry. <clears throat> I'm sorry. He was one of the pupils of Rabbi Akiva. One of the pupils, right? Acher. And Acher was Alisha ben Avua. And he was a tremendous genius. And he went together. He was uh, the, and to get, he went together with Rabbi Akiva. He went together with Rabbi Akiva. I'm sorry, he was not. He was he was a contemporary of Rabbi Akiva. This is like 1,800 years ago, something like that. <clears throat> 1,900 years ago. Rabbi Akiva, they were contemporaries. And, and Rabbi Akiva and three of his other uh, compatriots, they went, they meditated or whatever, they contemplated, they went into the secrets of higher levels of reality of higher levels of reality into these upper spiritual worlds and that usually people are only privy to after they die, but they somehow or other elevated themselves. And it says that Acher, that all, there were, that all of them, uh, except for Rabbi Akiva, had um, uh, a tragedy, a tragedy. One of them died, one of them went crazy, and Acher, he became an apostate. He decided that there's two gods. He decided that there's two gods. So... <clears throat> A God for the good, the God for the bad. I don't whatever it was that he decided, but he he became an apostate. So on the other hand, Acher was a tremendous genius, <clears throat> Alicia Ben Avua. And he so when he died, he couldn't go to, couldn't be punished for his sins. He did a lot of sins. I mean, he thought there were two gods, so therefore, he, you know, accordingly, he didn't. He felt himself not <clears throat> constrained by the Torah. Because the Torah only comes from one of the gods, and there's another, whatever. If he thought he did big sins, but he couldn't be punished for them. Why? Because he had learned a lot of Torah. On the other hand, he couldn't go up to heaven because he did a lot of sins. So he was stuck in the middle. <clears throat> so one of his his pupils was Rabbi Meir, whatever. He interceded. He prayed, and Acher went to hell. He went to hell, I think, for seven years. Whatever, went to hell. And there was smoke coming up from his grave. <clears throat> and it says that the, the punishments in hell, one second of hell is like 70 times, 70 years of the pain of Job. <clears throat> Which Job, uh, Eov, was, the, it's a whole book written about how God made him suffer. It's a whole long, terrible story. But anyway, he suffered terribly. And as much as he suffered, multiply that by 70 and multiply that by I guess, what is it, so 60 hours a day and 60 minutes in an hour and then 60 seconds in a minute. So multiply that by three times 60 and the number of the 365. And that's how much pain there is in one second of hell. And he was there for seven years, I think, seven years. And so it was a tremendous pain. So it says, Mutav Ladaine. 
it is better for him to suffer the pains of hell in order to go to heaven. Because the pleasures of heaven are so incredibly intense and great that it's worth it to suffer uh, being on the dentist's chair for seven years straight with no painkiller. Worth it. It's worth it. <laughs> this doesn't make any sense. But the pleasure makes even less sense. The homage is the greatest pleasure. <clears throat> so in order, if a person wants to go to heaven, <clears throat> so he has to, first of all, go through some sort of hell in order to get rid of the it's false egotism. Huh? The Gam Lamabal and also the flood and Benar Dinor. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I made a mistake. The Gam Litbal and also he has to go through what's called the river of fire. This is explained in order to go to heaven. It, we don't talk that much about going to heaven or hell. There is such a certain such a thing, but it's it's not that important. It's there, it's important in order to learn from it that there is reward, there is punishment, <clears throat> but there's a process that has to be gone through to get a person, to rid a person of his connection, his false connection to his false egotism, there's a, a, a process of purification. And so similar, it's also by means of shibud. The same thing is also by the trials of making a living in this world, of being honest in this world. Yochlim la'alos la'may la'may you can get tremendously high a yota gavot are the highest levels uh, of being honest. In a shibud, I mean, it, just to think about it one second, if you think about it, take one of these people who's a really successful, uh, you know, th there used to be movies like this all the time. Guy is a big criminal or he's part of the, the other side and he's doing, you know, killing people and everything. And suddenly one moment, <clears throat> you know, he's up to, about to kill a child or something. And just when he looks in the child's eyes and the camera moves into the child's and moves into his eyes, see a little tear, and suddenly there's a little spark of humanity. is lit in, you know, Genghis Khan's eyes or whatever it is, and a little spark of humanity. And, you know, and is, it, is it going to continue? Will it grow? Will it cause him to disband his robbers or his, you know, mafia or Cosa Nostra or whatever, or his... <clears throat> His army or whatever, his plans of destruction, will this little bit of humanity, you know, rule or will it not rule? That's the whole point of being in this world. Will we act in a human way, in a way which is according to our conscience? And our conscience can also be hijacked, but the, the Torah tells us where your conscience should be leading you, right? So a person is put into the world. So you got one choice is you can go and sit up in a mountain like that guy that I talked about and not eat anything for 40 years. But then it means that you always remain in this sort of dormant state. You you like become a, a, a baby in a womb and you've never really contacted truth. You've been bribed by spiritual pleasures or whatever it is, and you never really got the truth. Like there, there's these people, <laughs> there's these people, they take drugs, uh, the, the, what is it, the, the psychedelic drugs. They psychedelic drugs and they and they have these experiences and they experience and they experience, but they never really do anything. They never get anything done in the world. They never help anybody. They just right remove themselves from the world. How to be removed? Okay, I guess it's better than you know being in the street and and and, and, and robbing and stealing and cheating people. But that's not the point. The point is, is to be in in the world because the world has amazing lessons to teach us. Amazing lessons to teach us. <clears throat> and one of the things that the world, the lessons do is that they lessen our false conceptions of the world. It's like the difference between being asleep and being awake. When you're asleep, you have all these experiences and you're doing this and it's going around, but you're not doing anything. You're not really becoming a human being. A human being. Okay, so that's the, the point of the world is to, re, by means of the trials in the world, by the floods, the turbulent flood waters of the challenges of this world, it reveals our soul. It reveals who we really are. And who we really are is a, a pure creation of God. Every human being, every human being is made in the image of God, but it can't be revealed unless we meet the challenges of the world. And how often, it, <laughs> excuse me, it is that we can see that there's people 
right? You always find these stories about these people that everybody, you know, they 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 adore them and they're worshipped, and this, this guy's like the pope or he's the great guru of whatever. And then they start to realize he's messing around with young boys or with young girls or with you know stealing money or whatever he's doing with like Stalin, right? They realized he was a, just a, a disgusting because he couldn't meet the challenges of the world. Right? So we can see the person could be pure and he can write books and he can write this, this, but the world all of a sudden bribes him, threatens him, changes him, controls him. So that's not really a human being. It's not really a human being. So the world purifies us. <clears throat> so in the time of the Holy Temple, Hyalina, we had a king, Bahamas, and the there was a, a lot of uh, taxes. Like it says, the, the everybody had to give at least one-tenth of his income to, now you have to give more. The intention is, in the time of the Holy Temple, there was a blessing. True, everybody had to give who knows whatever. 90% of your income, you had to give to the, the king. But people earned a, a hundred times more. And not only did they earn a hundred times more, but the whatever they did earn had a blessing in it. <clears throat> and therefore, there was a blessing. Shalom al Nobody stole from anybody. It was unheard of. No one cheated anyone. Everyone was happy with what they had. And everybody had a lot. Because everybody trusted God. Nobody even dreamed of lying, <clears throat> getting worrying. No such thing as worrying. Like it says in the end of Ketuvah, there was no worries about the world. But now, why? Because the people were refined. People <clears throat> listened to what God said. And automatically, the world was a better place. The world was without worries without sickness but now and that's what's going to be in the days of the Mashiach but now each one of us has that we have to worry about working in this world and that's these turbulent waters now, now there's no bigger revelation of God than what happens in this world? And there's those people that think that the revelation of God is up in heaven and these things. I mean, they're right. They got a good. It's true, but it's absolutely nothing compared to what goes on in the world because God is creating the world. The world is not just a testing ground. <clears throat> it is certainly a testing ground, but it's not just a testing ground. Every detail in the world is pure godliness, and when we do what God wants, it reveals a level of godliness, not necessarily spirituality. It's a, a feeling of wholesomeness, like the difference between being sick and being healthy, between being asleep and being awake, right? Once a person is sick and then he gets healthy, so in the beginning he's very happy, but afterwards you take it for granted. And people that are never were sick, they're always healthy, so they, they have to make a big effort to appreciate life because they just take it for granted. <clears throat> the same thing is also in this world when there's difficulties and we... We, we uh, uh, how do you say, pass the test. We meet the challenge of the world <clears throat> by, in other words, by being honest, by being truthful, by being, this, <clears throat> by being positive when everybody else is negative. This opens up an aspect of our soul that sort of wakes us up to how important this world is. And therefore, this world, by the challenges of this world, they're called waters of Noah. They're called these turbulent waters because it gives pleasure to God. Because by means of these turbulent waters and difficulties of this world, the soul goes up a higher level than it was before. That before the soul came into the world, it was getting, it was in heaven, it was in heaven, it was getting enjoying the rays of God's presence. Like it says, But nevertheless, the rabbis say it's better even one moment <coughs> of doing tshuva. And we'll talk about tshuva means. But tshuva means essentially to return to that consciousness 
that you had before you were born and doing good deeds, right? To, to return to that consciousness, but also to put it into good deeds. In this world, even one second is better than all the world, the life of the world to come. So here we have three levels, if you want to call it. Here we learned that that the the Acher, Alicia Ben Avua, the big Torah genius scholar, and also the big sinner, that he had two choices. And now Hasidus is giving us a third choice. Either you could go to hell, and in order to then through going to hell, you go to heaven, which is infinite pleasure. And now the Rebbe is saying that there's a third level, which is staying in this world. And staying in this world is infinitely higher than going to heaven. <clears throat> Why? Why? Because in this world, you give God pleasure. In this world, it says, Nachat Ruach Amarti Rotsoni, that God gets pleasure, God gets pleasure from our meeting the challenges of this world. So to speak, it's a thing that God himself can't do. Now, we can't sense this in a normal way. And when a person, after a person passes away, he goes to heaven, he senses a little bit of it. But there are people, tzaddikim, <clears throat> the Lubavitcher Rebbe, the Baba Sali, these other people that are tzaddikim, that they sense how precious every instant of this world is. And that explains why the Lubavitcher Rebbe also, and there's other great tzaddikim, especially the pupils of the Baal Shem Tov, but there were huge tzaddikim of the Sephardic, and as far as there was a Ben Ishchai in, in Morocco, in, in, in Iraq, and the Baba Sali, and Reb, there's others, Pinto, these people in from the Morocco. And there was, a, what was this called? The, the uh, Chai Tayyib was from Tunisia. Amazing tzaddikim that they did these amazing things in this world, healing people, giving people the, 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 the people, barren women that they gave birth to children because being in this world is 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 infinitely one second of this world. So Shachat means even one moment of this world is be better than all of the heavens, all of the heavens. So Acher found out it was, it was worthwhile to suffer seven years in hell to get one second of heaven. Think what an infinite level of heaven, the highest levels of heaven, and it's nothing compared to one second in this world, because in this world we give God pleasure. All these others are we getting pleasure. Why? Because it's what's called the Yitrona or Minachoshek, because in this world we can transform darkness to light, and when we do that, it accomplishes something that can't be done in the heavens. God, so to speak, himself can't do it, because by God there's no darkness. God is never put into a challenge. This is what's called Eskafia Sitra Achra. This is what's called controlling the other side. Sitra Achra means the other side. <clears throat> controlling, forcing. Eskafia is Hapcha Chashucha And that transforms darkness to light. That transforms darkness to light. Okay, Kala Yom, when a person works the whole day, Binyan and Kashmir, the physical things, the Turtus Parnasa, making a livelihood. This is called darkness, and you think afterwards in prayer how it is. She'en Esav. Now you start to think, and here the Rebbe is going to give us a whole order of what to think about. Listen to this one second. One minute, I've got to change the page. I remember an interesting thing. I think this is worth a, a mention. <clears throat> There's a book which is called How to Win Friends and Influence People. You ever read this book? Very famous book. It was written like 100 years ago or something. How to Win Friends <clears throat> and Influence People. And what it talks about is how to be a successful egotist. You're not doing anything for the truth. You're not doing anything for God or for the, you're doing it only to succeed. But it's telling that if you want to succeed, then you have to fix up your personality. <clears throat> you have to fix up your personality. I was once very interested in this. So I went, <clears throat> I remember going once a lot. I don't even, it, we talk, I, ta I told you this a lot of times. And I went to Barnes and Noble. Noble, it, it still exists. I don't know. And now, now is with everything is on, uh, online. But anyway, they had, and there's all these different sections there. There's a bookstore. And they had on religion and they had on, on health and they had this. And 
<clears throat> each one had like one bookcase, two bookcases, and self improvement had like ten book ten bookcases. <clears throat> because people realize that they're not the way they're supposed to be, and this world sends us messages. It lets us know that we have to fix up our personalities. <clears throat> Here the Rebbe is saying that, yes, you have to fix up your personality. <clears throat> but in addition to that, right, you want to be a good salesman, you want to be a good, you can't get angry at people, you can't get depressed, you got this. You have to be patient, you have to prepare, you have to know your topic, you have to know your product, you have to know this, this. <clears throat> That's all that's true. But here the Rebbe is also giving an additional thing. And he's saying that the world is challenging on its own. In order to succeed in the world is challenging, right? It's challenging. It's a struggle. I'm, I'm sure all of you know that one of the biggest, most evil people in the world, he wrote a book which is called My Struggle, right? His struggle in the, the challenges of the world, Mein Kampf, right? In order to take over Germany, in order to... Con consolidate the army in order to fix up the economy you know yeah the the, <clears throat> the world is challenging the world is challenging but it depends on what your goal is if your goal is unifying germany strengthening communism or something then the world is also a challenge and wars are fought and things like that okay but if your goal is to serve god and to be <clears throat> honest and positive and and build, let's say, constructive in the world according to on God's terms, then the challenges are much greater. The challenges are much greater because now you can't do whatever you want in order to succeed. In fact, what you do might even cause you to, to lose, right? The, the, the prime example is Abraham. Abraham did whatever God wanted, and <clears throat> all he did, at least in the beginning, was lose until the degree he took his son it's to kill him, right? It was three days, all the whole time he was going, he was thinking, you know, that's it. I'm, that, it's finished. It's finished. Everything I worked for my whole life, all of my struggles, all of my sacrifices, it's all down the drain. And I only gave it, nobody's going to carry out my message about the oneness of God. I'm going to kill. <clears throat> but I'm doing what God wants. I'm doing, I'm going to lose the whole thing, but I'm doing what God wants. So this is a whole different level of, of, of challenge that we're being presented with. And, and, we, and we are being presented with this challenge every moment, every moment. So when a person thinks, okay, so, so, so you start to think, okay, I'm going to do <clears throat> what God wants. Where is God? What, what am I going to get out of it? But what did Abraham get out of it? What did Abraham get? I mean, just think about it. God promised Abraham he was going to make him a great nation. His children were going to be like the stars of the sky, and he was going to get the land of Israel. And he didn't get it. And, and his son Isaac also didn't get it. And Jacob, it was like 400 years, four, 500 years later <clears throat> that came Moses. He got out of Egypt, and Moses also didn't get the land of Israel. He right? didn't get it. So, what's the purpose? We're, we're working, we're serving God. For Mashiach and Mashiach is supposed to come and the world is going to be good, but we've been saying that for thousands of years, right? So, so what, what, what's the point? The point is that we're doing the truth. We're doing according to what our faith tells us is the truth. We're not doing it for ourselves. And we're not doing it in order to go to heaven. <clears throat> we're doing what God wants because that's what God wants. Will we get heaven? Will we get hell? Abraham was not concerned with it. Isaac, Jacob, Moses, they weren't concerned with it. That's what Judaism is. Heaven exists. Heaven is the greatest reward you can't possibly imagine. The greatest reward. And you shouldn't be concerned with that. That's not your concern. Your concern is, is only to do, say, think what God wants in this world and meet the challenges of the world. And God throws all these challenges in your way. You don't have to, you know, you don't have to make up suffering. You don't have to, to sit on a bed of nails. Whatever God God provides you, and suffering is not necessarily the, the 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 only way to achieve this. We're just talking about meeting challenges, meeting challenges. If the challenges happen to be, God forbid, you know, sickness or whatever, but, but nevertheless, we say God forbid before that. We don't say, oh, it's good. You're suffering. This is good. You're going to get elevated. A person maybe can say that to himself after he starts the suffering, but you have to avoid suffering. <laughs> What's the question? But you have to avoid it according to the Torah. 
have to avoid it. There was who knows how many Jews were killed in the in the Inquisition, and they were given the choice to change their religion or to die. Muhammad killed thousands and thousands of Jews, right? And but he gave them a choice. He gave them a choice that you can change religion or you can. But if they change the religion, let them go. Let them go. But there was thousands of them that refused to change the religion. So what did they get out of it? There was, they were presented with a challenge. <clears throat> the answer is they didn't think about getting. They didn't think about receiving anything. That's exactly the challenge. That's the challenge. Okay, so let's think. Why should we serve God? So here we go. The only thing about God is not that He gave us the Torah. We can start from below up. For instance, when we start to think, like it says <clears throat> that nothing happens in the world milamata that hasn't got some sort of spiritual power from above. Sheema Mazala, these are the flow, flowing of godliness that they give life into the world. So just like your brain, when you want to move your hand, there's a whole process from your brain because it comes an impulse which goes through your whatever is the the, 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 the the spinal cord, the spinal cord comes to the nerves, and the nerves come to the muscles, the muscles move to this. There's, all, there's, well, there's also the same thing in the world. <clears throat> when God wants to do something, Right? When you want to move something, you see a pianist or something, they move, it's automatic. But the fact is, there's a whole big, huge process going on with it. The same thing is also in the world. <clears throat> when God wants things to grow, so he doesn't reveal himself like on Mount Sinai. There's a whole process. It comes through the heavens. And it says through the Megatavu Shemesh, some, some things grow because of the influence of the sun, some because of the moon. <clears throat> there's also the stars, the zodiac. They receive from what's called the 70 chieftain angels, these angels they receive from what's called the leftovers of the Ophanim, the wheels, different types of angels. And they receive from other angels that are higher than them, the burning up angels, the seraphim, it says, the flames, whatever. And they're higher and higher and higher. And they receive until finally receives what's called God's speech, God's kingship. <coughs> <coughs> <clears throat> That's what all the Kabbalistic books talk about. This whole chain of reality that comes from God into this world. And each one is just godliness, but it's sometimes it's like toned down godliness. Like it says, Malchut cha, Malchut kolamim. You're, <coughs> God, your kingship is the kingship of all the worlds. God's lowest aspect of kingship, that's the highest aspect of the world. Shemahavet kolam, all that God creates everything constantly from nothing to something. Mamish, really. And what creates us is only called Ziva Shechina. That's just a ray of God's presence. If God would reveal himself too much, we would just be burned up. Sheinu ala bechina Ziva or is just a ray alone. The Gabi Mahuto Vatsmuto regarding God's essence. Kivyacha, so to speak. Shehu bechina is ain sov. This is ain sov, really. Haya hava v'yeh b'li shinoi mamish. So God himself... <coughs> It's like me talking to you now. I'm talking to you now. Is it me talking to you? No, it's not me talking to you. It's coming through the internet. And even if we were speaking face to face, it's not, is it really me? No, it's not me. You're just hearing my words. You're just seeing light bounce off of my face. <clears throat> and that's not really me. So what are you talking about? That's you, right? If I lie, I can't say, I wasn't lying. It wasn't me lying. It was the words. It was my, my nervous system. <clears throat> my muscular system that moved my tongue, and that's what lied. Of course, that's ridiculous. <clears throat> it's me. The same thing. God is creating the world. He's creating it personally, but he's creating the world through a whole process. And this whole process, by, which, by means of which God is creating the world, <clears throat> this is what's called hishtalshul. We'll learn about this later. It's called the chain of creation. <clears throat> Because God Himself is above any of the worlds. God is a, He's not an existence, so to speak. God creates all existence. The, the world is just like a big ray of a ray of a ray of a ray of God's. So therefore, it can't change God. God, the same God that before the world was created, is the same God as now because the world is made from nothing. So if you subtract the world from God, where the world is. God is not. Where is the world? It's not. <laughs> the world is nothing. <clears throat> so God never changed. How can this possibly be? <laughs> it's impossible to comprehend this. 
right? God created time. Before God created time, there was no time. So there was no before the world. <clears throat> God created existence. Before God created existence, there was no existence. What was there? The whole thing makes no sense whatsoever. But that's God. And God, that God is creating me and you. We're really here. Here we are. And when you start thinking about this, that one second, I thought I was real. And the Torah is telling you, you really are real. But the reality of God is infinitely more. In fact, even the reality of the worlds which are above this world are infinitely more real than this world is. And there's infinite numbers of reality, <clears throat> levels of reality. Each one makes the level below it like nothing. When a person thinks about this, if so, how real God is and how, so to speak, unreal I am, when we think about this, and, and the whole point is me and you. The whole point of it is us, this physical world. It's infinitely important to God, more important than all these other levels. <clears throat> when a person thinks about this, this or nafsha, then your soul will be aroused in a level of love. Pachuka, wow, God is really creating me for free. He's giving me, right? <clears throat> If some the, 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 the doctor would come and heal all the sick, how happy everybody would be. Here God is creating everybody, 8 billion people, free for nothing, just creating us. Healthy. Huh? If so, when you think about this, okay, 8 billion people, that's, that's, a, that's a big miracle. But then God is creating me. That's the ultimate miracle. And everyone can say that to himself. I am being created. I don't even feel it. I don't have any idea what you're talking about. That's how real God is and how unreal we are. We don't feel it. But when you start thinking about the truth, then you have a chuka nifla, a tremendous desire, karish fe'esh, like flaming fire, to go from the darkness and the concealment of this world, the rock and only to, only to be connected to the truth, which is God. Like it says, mili bishamayim, who am I, who do I want in heavens, in chalochavasti, and I don't desire anything except for you. Shalo yachpotz klal, I don't want not the upper heaven, not the lower heaven, I don't want to go to heaven. I don't want the lower heavens. I don't want the upper heavens. I don't want all the pleasures of anything, not the spiritual pleasures, nothing. Shame, Rab, because all of those are just a ray of godliness. Like it says, Tzadikim Yoshvim, it says <clears throat> that in heaven, that all the Tzadikim, the righteous people sit, and there's a, a, a halo, whatever, of godliness. The Nani Mizishchin, and they get tremendous pleasure <clears throat> from feeling the essence of life. And I don't want it. I don't care about that. All I want is just to cling to God. To be connected to God's essence. And this is called in the Zohar, to be like united with the body of the king. And this level is called tshuva. That's what's called tshuva. Tshuva, to return. yoter. This coming from the darkness and the darkness of this world and desiring to be one with the creator in this world, this is tremendous power. Power. <clears throat> it comes from the darkness. There's some people like in the army, whatever they give people like that, they call them a hero. They give them a hero. <clears throat> also, I think in almost all countries, right? All of a sudden, the, 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 the terrorists attack a, a, a kindergarten, and they're all over. And one person, one kindergarten teacher, runs out with just the, you know, the uh, the pointer of the, the points to the blackboard. She runs out in front of them with a the pointer. She sticks it in their eyes and knocks all these people down. And they're, suddenly their guns don't work. And she knocks them, and she takes their guns, and it works for her, and she kills them, That's, and she defies death and danger and <clears throat> injury in order to save the children. Uh, 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 amazing. <clears throat> this woman is a hero, right? A hero. They give her a big, why was she a hero? What's the hero? What's the big hero? The, the, the hero? Here's a hero. The children were alive before, and now they were still alive. So what's the big deal? What's the big deal? Says so he's a hero because she defied the darkness. She defied her natural tendencies. Natural tendencies, someone has a gun, and you run away. But she did not think about herself. <clears throat> this woman, and she ran, and she saved, and she did this. And they have soldiers that are, <clears throat> that get the, 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 the medals, because they, the, well, the fact is, everybody can be a hero. 
A hero is a person that breaks, defies nature, defies nature for the sake of good. So he says, that's the whole purpose that God put us into this world. And that's called tshuva, to defy our nature, to defy the whole nature of the world. And this makes you into a hero. This comes specifically from darkness. Namely, what happens in the world. You have a chance to cheat. You have a chance to lie. You have a chance to, to take advantage of someone. And you don't do it. Who knows about it? Only you and God. <clears throat> Only you and God. And that's what you want it. That's the way you want to keep it. If somebody else finds about it, that's okay. <clears> this <throat> is there used to be Hasidim in the beginning that they were very disappointed if someone found out the things that they did, <clears throat> the good things. They stayed awake late. They gave a tremendous amount of charity. They helped people out. They didn't want anybody to know about it. The Lubavitcher Rebbe made a big thing that if you do good deeds, you should advertise it because that encourages others to do good. <clears throat> <clears throat> but essentially what you do is between you and God. If so, this is what's called love, which is unlimited, infinite love. She says, It's a sentence in the Torah, right after Shema Yisrael. We learned it a few months, what is it, one month ago? <clears> that says, Shema Yisrael, it's the motto of Judaism. Shema Yisrael, <clears throat> listen Jews, understand Jews, God is our God, God is one. And then the next sentence says, and you should love God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, and with all of your being. <clears throat> That's all of your being. Shubhligavul, this is infinite. And it comes from only from meeting challenges, from meeting the opposite. <clears throat> Darkness. <clears throat> like it says, <clears throat> God saw everything that he made and it was good. He said, that's the angel of life. And in the end, it says that God, it got what, God saw everything he made and it was very good. Tov me'od. This is the angel of death. The angel of death is very good. How could that be? It says because by means of the opposite, by means of looking death in the face and by means of being in a situation of darkness and difficulty, <clears throat> which is automatic. That's your natural soul. Yochalim Lavo, you can come to a tremendous level of love, which is unlimited. <clears throat> unlimited. So a lot of things that are in the world, when they're true, it's private between you and someone else. One you know, big example of this is love. Love. People have love for a relative, for a, their wife, uh, children. They have love. How is love expressed? How is love expressed? It's intimate. It's quiet. It's secret between you. And the, it's not necessarily physical. Physicality is an expression of the love. But the feeling of love itself is infinitely, how do you say, internal. It touches the inside of the soul. And it's just between you and the one that you love. It's between you. And it doesn't necessarily have to be, when is it, yes, revealed? When there's some sort of a challenge, or some sort of a challenge, right? A man gets married to a woman, she's very beautiful, and et cetera, this, this, this. And God forbid something happens, she gets into an accident, or let's say they, 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 they age, they get old, and she's not beautiful anymore, not as she was before. Does he still love the woman? Well, we see, how do they act? How do they act? How do they react? When he's there, nah, this is not what I want. I wanted somebody beautiful, somebody that... Uh, <clears throat> now he's not thinking about what I want. Love means you only think about the other person. Same thing as loving God. You only think about God. What can I do for God? He's doing everything for me. It's an internal, infinite, deep, inti intimate, essential love that's called with all of your being, which is unlimited. This can only be achieved through the challenges of this world. That's what the tests are. Abraham was a Jew by virtue of 10 tests. God did terrible things to him. And he said, God, do whatever you want to. I still love you. He promised him that he was going to give him, and he didn't come across with his promises. And God, Abraham said, I don't care. <clears throat> My love for you is infinite. Why? Not because of what God does to us, because of what God is. Hainu lefisha shor maila maila, because this the source 
of everything in the world, even the animal soul, is tremendously higher even than the godly soul. Like it says, these are the kings that ruled before. So the challenges of this world <clears throat> are higher than all the revelations of the upper worlds. And that's the idea of Noah. And that's what we're going to talk about more tomorrow. That's the whole idea of why God created the world and he put us into the world. Because why? Rock, because... <clears throat> I'm sorry. Al Yadei Nefesh... Nefesh... Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, I, get, I skipped. <clears throat> it says, like, these are the kings that ruled before they ruled the king of the Jewish people. It's talking about over there, Esau and his relatives. <clears throat> it says, before... It says that it gives a list of the non-Jewish kings that ruled, what is it, 4,000-something years ago, <clears throat> before there was a king of the Jewish people. What do we care what happened 4,000 years ago? It says this is talking about what's called the breaking of the vessels of the world of Toh. It's a, it's a deep Kabbalistic secret. But the breaking of the vessels, that's what caused bad things to be in this world, challenges in the world. Like it says, V'yim lach v'yomos. But in the source, these challenges, these difficulties in the world are tremendously high. They're even higher than the godly soul itself. So somehow or other, this world is higher than all of the upper worlds. Therefore, as these challenges and difficulties are in this world, somehow they have the ability to overpower even the godly soul. Because the source comes from this level of God's kingship, which is elevation. And we're going to talk about this more, more, more God willing, tomorrow. So in other words, meeting the challenges of this world, according to the Torah, <clears throat> is, accomplishes something that, all, that cannot be achieved in all of the upper worlds. In all of the upper worlds, you just get a little ray of the what you accomplished by and being in this world on God's standards, meeting the difficulties and challenges and darkness and confusions and frustrations and fears and, 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 and temptations of this world, <clears throat> it releases energy to the whole entire world. So in some ways, this world is the goal. And the godly soul is just the means to achieve this goal. And this is what we're going to talk about more. God willing, tomorrow, that's what the message of Noah is to us. The turbulent waters elevated and purified the whole entire world. And let's go now to <clears throat> Yom Yom, the Dvar Malchut.